everybody. Um, for those of you who don't know, my name is Michelle the Bookworm, and I am really excited to be doing this video. So um, about once a year, I try to host my own um, readathon. Um, it's not like I'm doing this as a group with anybody, but I started doing the um, reading rush a few years back and it just inspired me to start um, prioritizing what my, re my reading goals at least once a year for one week. So this year um, I, I had planned ahead to do it at the end of August um, because it would be the week before I go back to work. I work at a special education school um, this year, I wasn't anticipating having, um, I also have training this week, so while I'm not, like, working in the school, I still do have, um, some mandatory training, which is going to cut into my reading a little bit, but I'm excited because I worked, you know, I got a lot of things done last week, um, I was pretty social, I cleaned up my apartment, so I don't feel bad if, um, you know, I, uh, things get neglected a little bit around my house. Um, so I'm really excited. A lot, I'm going to be spending as much of my free time this week, um, buckling down and reading because I am very behind on my reading goals. Um, I tend to start a lot of books, so I have um, ADHD, and I tend to start a lot of books, and don't always finish them, so this, um, this, and I also, so I want to finish some books, I also have um, a little bit of a problem, um, because I tend to start books, and um, not finish them, I have a lot of half-finished books that I've borrowed. So this readathon, I want to focus on books that I have borrowed and that I intend to give back to their owners because I want to make sure that I'm not just hoarding books. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I have, so I have a stack of books here and I will, I'm really excited to um, get through them and kind of bump up my, my book numbers a little bit. Um, I'm also getting, I'm very comfy. I am very comfy in my fourth Hokage blanket. Thank you, Gordy. Yes, I steal this blanket every single day that Gordy's not here. Because <laughs> it's very warm and fuzzy and cozy. Um, so I kind, I didn't, so my only reasoning for picking these specific books is because I need to finish them and return them to their owner. So um, let's go ahead and get started. I actually, um, so the first book I want to finish is um, the last book of the Percy Jackson series. So it's Percy Jackson and the Last Olympian. Thank you, Elliot, for letting me borrow this book series for so long. Um, I am finally on the last one, and I wanted to do this one first because um, my step-sibling, Elliot, is moving on to college, and I know that they probably want to take this series with them in case they want to do some, some reading. And it's also, I'm so close to being, like, done with this series. Um, I, it's a good series. It's a good book series. It's not that I, I don't like it. Um, it doesn't. It's just a little, um, it can be a little slow, and it can be a little jarring um, in the sense of, okay, now we're doing this, and now we're doing this, and now this big event is happening. So I'm, I feel like I would have really have enjoyed this book series if I had read it in high school, but um, it's really good. It's still pretty good. I'm really enjoying a lot of the um, folklore and a lot of the references to uh, different ancient um, 
ancient gods and that kind of lore. I really do enjoy um, reading stories about um, just like ancient Greece tropes and I'm I'm looking forward to finally finishing this series. It's also on my 100 essential books to read in your lifetime. Um, this series is on that, so I will be able to scratch that series off after this book. So this is the first book I want to read. It's pretty short. It's one of my shorter books. Um, it is... Oh my gosh, there's a bookmark in here. Huh. <laughs> cool. Um, it... How many pages is it? It's like 381 pages, so it's it's one of my shorter ones. It's not too bad. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading this. The second book that I have on my reading list is one that I have actually restarted, um, and I'm not going to restart it again. I, um, I might go back a few chapters, but I do need to get this book back to um, its owner, and that is Outlander by um, Diana Gabaldon. I had started this book years ago, and then I started reading it, and I got pretty far. I don't know what is with me in this book series, but I think it just gets to a point where, like, I'm, like, she's just not progressing with her goal, and I just get, she just gets kind of caught up with, um, like, everyday life in, um, the 1700s, and I, it, I'm just I'm not as interested in that part, but, um, so I'm currently, I'm actually going to go back, um, a little bit, I'm going to start on chapter 24, um, which is about halfway through the book. So I'd like to finish, um, ha like half of this book. So I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to try to read about half. Um, and, um, I will probably listen to this book as an audiobook as well as read it because I want to make sure that I get through it so I can return it to its proper owner. Um, for those of you who don't know, a lot of you probably do know what Outlander is about. Outlander is about this woman named Claire Randall who gets sent back in time. Um, she's originally from the um, uh, she's originally from like 1940s, um, and she steps into this. Um, break in time, and she gets whisked away to the year uh, 1743. Um, she was married when she was whisked away, so there's a little bit of like a love triangle. Um, and then she, uh, she was married when she left um, and, and was, was transported back, and then she had to get married. Um, when she traveled back because she was an unmarried woman that she just couldn't, like, just for different circumstances, she was forced to get married to, um, Jamie Fraser. So, it's, um, it's lots, a little bit of politics. Um, I'm not, like, super into politics, but what I really love about this book is that, um, Claire has a lot of knowledge about um, medicinal plants, and I've been really been very interested in botany and um, different uses for plants lately. So that's the part that I'm finding like most fascinating. And a lot of this book is not about that. It's a lot of politics. It's a lot of traveling, honestly. <laughs> um, so I'm looking forward to finishing this book as well. This next book that I want to read is um, another short one, but it's it's a nonfiction. So um, it's actually um, a memoir. So 
I borrowed this from a friend. Thank you. Um, I believe I borrowed this from Heather. So thank you, Heather. I So this is Stephen King on writing. Um, Stephen King is one of my favorite authors in the whole wide world. He is absolutely amazing. And I've been wanting to read this memoir for a very long time. Um, he talks about just how he, like, did her craft, did his craft, and um, how he became uh, this phenomenal author. I mean, Stephen King is he's the king he's one of the best um and it's really i feel like the chapters are pretty short honestly um i mean it's really it looks like it's something that's really easy to digest and really easy to um pick apart and learn from i i i've always loved king's writing and his writing form um, and I'm really looking forward. This is one of the books that might take me a little bit longer because I might want to take like notes on it, but I'm honestly really excited and looking for, um, looking forward to this. Um, so it's like, this is part memoir, part masterclass by one of the best selling authors of all time. So it's really, um, it's, I'm really fascinated to learn more about King, more about his process, and um, hopefully pick up a few tips and tips and tricks of um, as a budding writer. So I have two more books that I want to um, go ahead and finish. The first book is a book that I borrowed a while ago from my father-in-law, and um, that is The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo. It has this beautiful, beautiful green cover, and I think I'm actually pretty far... No, I'm not. I'm on chapter two, so I am... A um, hundred pages in, and this one's a pretty chunky book. Um, we'll we'll see how far I get into this book. Um, I'm debating whether or not I want to start it over or if I just want to um, just keep pushing through. I think I want to start it over because. Um, I had put it down and I, I haven't picked it up in over a year. So, um, so this is the Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo. It's honestly, I'm not, I haven't gotten to the part yet where, um, the Hunchback is really the center of the novel, um, which is really interesting because, it's, it's, the title is The Hunchback of Notre Dame, but I've heard a lot more about Esmeralda at this point than The Hunchback. So maybe rereading the first part of it will, will help. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Um, this might be one of those books that I read it like just a chapter at a time because it can be pretty chunky. Um, this book was written what this in the this book was written by Victor Hugo in 18 in the or you know in the mid 1800s so I'm looking forward to finishing this book and um eventually getting it back to um my uh stepfather at some point in time um yeah, it, it, it is one of those books that I, I, again, it was a classic, it's a classic book, and I kind of just got a little, um, it just got a little heavy and um, bogged down with language, so now I'm prepared, now I know, and I'm ready to start it again. 
And this last book is actually a book that I've read before, but it's been so long that I wanted to read it again. Um, this is a book called Girl with a Pearl Earring. I read this, I think, when I was in elementary school. Um, and, or so I think I read it in like either elementary school or sixth grade. And I remember really liking it. I remember being fascinated by it because it involved um, an artist. So it, um, for those of you who um, don't know, this is um, pretty much like a, like a fan fiction. Um, Girl with a Pearl Earring is a painting by... Um, Vermeer's by the famous artist Vermeer and this is like a, a fan fiction of the girl's story so Vermeer um it would be like telling the story of the Mona Lisa um the no one knows who the girl with the pearl earring is and um this is Tracy Chevalier's concept of why he picked this girl, who was she, what was her backstory, and just really bringing to life the ob the person of the portrait. Um, I'm really excited. I'm, I, I actually don't remember. Um, I remember enjoying this book, but I don't really remember what it was about, so I'm looking forward to reading it again. <laughs> All right, so here they are in order. Um, in order of how I'm going to read them this month because I need to finish them really badly. Um, so this is also going to be my TBR for the month of September. Um, I know that I have a lot of other um, kind of like self-help books that I'm working on, but I think um, aside from the self-help books that I'm kind of in the process of reading weekly, um, I, I'm primarily going to focus on these books this month because I really want to get them back to the rightful owners. So in order, I'm going to be reading Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Then I'm going to be reading Outlander. Um, then I'm going to be reading On Writing by Stephen King. Then... The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo, and then Girl with the Pearl Earring by Tracy Chevalier. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have her, don't have the author's name memorized. Um, and I'm looking forward to this. I feel like this is like a very wide variety. Um, this kind of shows like my interests a little bit. So we've got a little bit of YA, um, historical romance. We've got some uh like nonfiction about writing and then we've got some classic literature and then uh fan fiction so um kind of a little bit of everything i'm really excited so i will keep you um so i'm going to be reading starting um tomorrow i'm going to read from um monday all through sunday of this upcoming week and I will try to keep you updated as much as I can. Um, again, I am working, so I want to spend more time reading and less time, like, vlogging. Um, I'm probably going to only vlog, like, a couple of times and let you guys know my progress. But I'm really excited. And um, let me know in the comments below if you were able to do a readathon this summer or if it's something that you've been really interested in and um like how do you choose your uh when you do do a readathon how do you choose your books let me know in the comments below all right thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time bye bookworms